Okay, welcome to Pete's latest video. This is about a quick utility that I've done here. Is a simple text to G code utility. All you do is you type the text into this line here. Below that, you can see the height of the text is there. Four millimeters has been selected, and below that, uh, there's a couple of numbers which tell it how high to fly tool and how deep to cut it into the piece of metal. You click on the button to make G code. It sticks it in a file on the desktop. This is Camotix, a piece of software which will display G code and what it'll do. So let's open the file. Here we go. Go to the desktop and open the appropriate file. It only makes one file name. The file name is fixed. You can rename it if you want. There we go. So that's the file being selected. And let's simulate it. There we go. And there is the output, which is the same text that I typed into the box. That is all that it does. The end. And let's talk about how it does it. Hmm. Okay, for example, this is the uh, character map for the letter capital letter D. And you see here, uh, the first element in the list, the first string in the list for this for this character is always the letter that it searches against. Once it's found that, then the rest of it is the actual G code data. That's the fly height Z coordinate. So I search and replace that in my code with the actual correct height for when the tool is above the workpiece flying. And that's the cutting height Z coordinate for when the tool comes down and cuts into the workpiece. And when it's finished, it goes back to the fly height again. And here, when it's at the flying height, it goes to the first coordinate on the character, which is naught naught, which is here. And then it goes down to the cutting height, which would be to cut into the workpiece in the bottom left hand corner of the character. And then it goes to X naught Y 18, which would be up to the top corner there. Then it would go to X9, Y18, which would be that corner, and then on to that, which would be that corner, and then so on round until it goes back to there, and then lifts the tool off again. And that would be the end of that character. And then it has a whole bunch of these lists. There's a lot of G code here for. There's an entire ASCII character set just about that I've entered. Actually, for these characters anyway. And uh, we'll talk about the C sharp program in a sec. Okay, so this is the C sharp program program that I've written. Uh, to generate G code from text strings. Uh, the interface looks a bit like this. Uh, you type your text into the box up here. Uh, you tell it the height of the font that you want and it scales the G code that I've put in as data statements. So we'll explain that in a moment. Uh, that's the height that the tool will move around clearing the workpiece. That's how far it will cut into it. Uh, you have to use a minus sign there to get it to actually cut into the workpiece. If you say a cutting depth of one millimeter, it will fly one millimeter above the surface of the material. You have to tell it minus one millimeter before it will cut into the material itself. This is based on the character set of the HP 1345A plotters and vector displays that they used to use on radars. And in the film War Games, for example, quite good. Uh, okay, so that's the basic interface, uh, and the only way I could work out to do this in C-sharp, which is what I'm stuck programming with now, is to actually make a list of lists. So I've done some text editing in Notepad++, and I've taken my work and I've reformatted it using a macro editor, uh, using a macro command sort of thing, uh, and... Now what I have is, for example, there's a character. Well, in fact, we'll just, I think I might have shown D earlier on. There's D there. There's a lowercase. There's, there's D there, for example. C 
So there's the character D. And you can see that basically what I've done is uh, I add elements to a list and the first character is the item that we search through and then this is the G code and this G code gets transformed by the main routine and there's an awful lot of this. That's the entire character set as Vec does because I couldn't work out how else to do this so that's what I did. It's taken me a day. It's been quite well spent because it, it seems to work. Uh, so having done that, you can fold that away and forget about it. And basically all this thing consists of, it's a fairly small program when you look at the overall scale of things. Um, this is the entire program. And so let's go through it. All we have is, uh, this is the button you click to actually do the work. And all this is doing here is you set an horizontal offset to zero which is the character offset as you're moving from, from, from left to right through the text string. Uh, these try catch statements are error catching uh, to see if the text that's in the boxes for the actual values of, uh, for example, uh, the fly height should be, for example, five millimeters you might I want to put in there. Well, if you type in the letter M instead, that will throw an error and that will catch it there. So we have these try catch statements to do uh, the catching of errors. And provided you haven't thrown any errors at that point, you'll pop out the end here with some values uh, which, are the cho which the user has chosen. And by the time you get down to here, provided the text box is not empty, you can start processing an output file. So you work out where the desktop is and get a path for that. You create a file, you drop a header into the file, then for each character in the string that's in your text box here, for each character there, you whiz through and you look at the first character and you compare it with each of the first characters say that again I'll say that again for each of the characters in your string you compare it with each of the first characters in your lists until you get a match once you get a match you've got the right list of G code for that character once you have the right list of G code, you process it. And if the string which you get in, first of all, what you have to do is you have to count the number of items. Because you don't know how many items are in that particular list. Each different strings have got different length lists. That's different length to that one, and it's a different length to that one. A space is particularly short. It's only got a probe fly command for the space for example there's nothing else in it so they're all different lengths so you have to count the number of elements once you've got the number of elements then you can work your way through the list with a for loop with a for loop you look at the fly command and then you turn it into an actual command with the fly height where you put the z coordinate in that you calculated back here somewhere there we go, look. I calculated the flying height from the test from the text box value. And if you put in a flying height of less than half a millimeter, it forces it to five. Just to be bloody minded. Um, it wishes through the code doing that and basically the next thing that it does is when you've got a x, y coordinate, it basically scales it. So it, it takes the g, the takes the g code x and y coordinates, inputs it, strips out the x and y values, and then scales them, put, turns them back into x and y values, 
and writes that new string to the output file as g-code. Then it increments the character position by 1 by adding on the offset in the native grid units. And that is the entire thing. This is just the thing that's the subroutine that strips the coordinates out of the actual g-code file, the, the g-code string. And that's it, there's some global variables. I don't care if you're not supposed to use global variables in C Sharp, I'm an old basic programmer from the 1970s for God's sake, leave me alone. Um, and that's unused, I can comment that out. Anyway, there you go. There's my horrible program that is going to be quite useful. And um, if I can put in a command line uh, input, then I'll be able to simply pipe stuff to it from the command line and not even have to use the user interface here and just make it so it's just a utility which just generates G code, G -G code from a text string that would be very useful because then I won't have to go through messing about with things like Inkscape and true type fonts all I want is to turn text strings into some numbers to etch onto the surface of a piece of metal for God's sake so there you go, that's the whole thing. How interesting, huh? So this is just to show the origin there. You set the probe to there on your workpiece and when you set play on your G-code it will start doing the text from that point there. So that's where the probe is, where the origin is shown there. And when you press play it will start doing the text as it is showing here in Camotics. You'll notice on the letter P there, for example, that it goes below Y equals zero. When you have lowercase characters, they'll do that. When you have brackets, they'll go below Y equals zero and above the height of capital letters as well. But that's it. That's what it does. There's your origin over there, bottom left. That's what I wanted this for. So you always had the origin in a known place. The end. Bye bye.